Hey everybody, it's time once again for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse. We do our damnest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant. And joining me this week, like a noodly cthulhu appendage, is my co-host, Mike Kafis. Mike, I can't hear you. What happened? Oh, sounds there like go. there's audio on the stream. I was just testing that. And I uh, I actually turned my microphone off so that I wouldn't be a dick and make sound come out of it, you know, when it wasn't necessary. So, hey, good news. Good news. You hey, sound it great. All right, fantastic. And on this episode, we are talking with Wolfgang Bauer. Welcome back, Wolfgang. Our first hey. try didn't work so good. Uh, Wolfgang, is a, Wolfgang Bauer is a game designer and game publisher and the head of COBOL... Uh, press, or the head Cobalt, sorry, head Cobalt of Cobalt Press. He enjoys occasionally wildly unbalanced encounters to freak out players, along with weird puzzles, strange languages, and, not surprisingly, Cobalt. He worked at TSR and Wizards of the Coast long ago and remembers them fondly, but really, Ghosts of Saltmarsh is the most recent D&D thing with his name on it. Wolfgang, welcome to the show. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Welcome. The last time we tried to do this was my birthday show, and for my birthday, the uh, streaming software crapped out on me. Just me. Everyone else was fine. Oh, no, it wasn't just that. It was your entire uh, laptop shit the bed, remember? Or something. I, it was horrible. Yeah. Something went down. I was like, and we imploded. But And it's, it's taken a while for us to get Wolfgang back on, but here we are. So, um, so let's talk some D&D stuff, man. You do, uh, you do a bunch of D&D yeah. stuff. I do a lot of that. I do that D and D stuff all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, although also Call of Cthulhu, to be fair. All right. Um, okay. And I, I won't. I won't lead with the Cthulhu. There's enough pentacles and everything all the time. Uh, but yeah, this summer uh, we did the big uh, forest book at Cobalt Press. It was called Tales of the Old Marie. It's about getting lost in the woods and then horrible things happen to you. Um, and for this fall have more horrible things happen to people. Um, that's sort of the theme of Cobalt Press is like, how far can we run you up a tree, um, you and your friends before, you know, there's a TPK. And then at that point, we get the playtest reports back, we back one notch. Um, that's sort of where we're at. I, I work with a whole lot of old school, hardcore types like Steve Winter and Kim Mohan. Who, uh, who have very little patience for whippersnappers. I mean, Kim Mohan edited freaking Gary Gags, right? So, like, he can certainly get my text smoothly. Right. Um, and he takes no BS, and I think it shows in the, the stuff we do. Yeah, you know what amazes me is this just unbelievable giant of D&D these days. I mean, it's just, it's so, I mean, it's everywhere, Wendy's released an RPG. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it are we at peak RPG? Does I mean, does that mean you know it's, it's kind of like when you could buy punk rock costumes at the uh, at the oh, yeah, at, at the store? It the was like, topic. oh, yeah, uh, punk rock's dead. Yeah. Uh, is, yeah. is, is D&D I mean, if Wendy's on a peak? is running RPGs, yeah, maybe we are at peak, but I think we won't hit peak till we get the movie. Okay, I hope we get the movie. But it's coming, right? I'd like to get. The uh, they've announced like a director and some actors, maybe. I'm not tracking Hollywood that closely. They change their minds every 12 seconds, but um, but somebody's working on it. They cut a deal, and if you know Hasbro says let's make a movie, I tend to think they're going to get it made. Right, and this uh, isn't going to be like but, that. That oh, the freak show. I I don't know. I don't know your opinion is on the other D, the original D and D movie, the one with Jeremy Irons. But I was kind of like I watched them both Ooh. once. Oh, so oh, there was two. That's right. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. yeah so there were two, so and bad. then there was a Dragon Lance animated one. Uh, <laughs> so, we haven't the movie we deserve. Well, yet. all right, Wolfgang. Let me ask you a quick question before uh, Pete jumps into uh, some of the other questions. What are your thoughts on just the, uh, I guess. 
the West Coast. When I say West Coast, I mean just all the Hollywoodism, and I mean just like uh, of almost D and D influencers. You know what I mean? Like the I oh, guess yeah. the Joe millennial Manglinario bite. And, yeah. yeah. On, on that and and i'm not saying it i don't want to say it that, that let even from my perspective it, it's a bad thing but i'm just curious like from you being uh and and identifying with old schoolers as well yourself what where where are you where do you sit on that well i, mean, I identify with the old schools i guess i'm turning into one of them right just time <laughs> marches on but um but you know my daughter's in a D D club for middle school and i've run games for scouts who are all of 14 right um there's that whole young generation of kids doing that stuff and then there's streamers who are fantastic people based out of la or hollywood and, and it's hard to argue with that kind of success right like right when i was in austin editing dragon magazine i only dreamed we'd have weekly like video content right we didn't know what streaming was but wouldn't it be great to be in everybody's home every week like there was the D cartoon yeah that yeah. was like the closest thing to cultural media that like went out to everyone who cared to see it yeah um so i say go right critical role and um acquisition unlimited and okay fine there's a cobalt there's two cobalt press streaming shows i have to mention here or they'll kill me later um which is Tree Burns with Wizards of the Coast designer Dan Dillon. Um, and there's The Last Air, uh, Crafter B. Muse. So they're doing both just amazing jobs streaming mega setting. Um, and they pull an audience. And it's not the audience that I'm part of, but. Right. But they're making it more popular. And I mean, the way I see it, if their heart's in it, if they truly are uh into it and have a, a true passion for it then i say yes go for it but if you're just driving or not driving but well if you're trying to drive a train that you don't even care about then just jump off <laughs> i don't think there's a lot of those people though right like i get yeah. approached by streamers and and most of them are like you know college kids running out of their dorm or like people doing it because they like it um I mean, I guess I want Wendy's to show up at my doorstep and say, we'd like Cobalt Press to do a supplement for us. I, there's nothing wrong with saying we're going to increase the reach and, and do something new. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess as I a, Hasbro's as, done it, right? As, as a business person, right? That's got to be good for you, though, right? Because, I mean, this this popularity oh, yeah. has got to be good for your sales. Uh, it is good. It, it's I mean, sales is part of it, but the part that gets me is the there's a new generation coming on board. My fear 10 years ago was D&D was going to sort of gray out and there wouldn't be a new generation. And we were all going to be a little sad because the old guard would sit around trying to convince people to play and, you know, in our retirement homes 10, 20 years from now. True. Um, oh, God, I, I look forward to that. I'd much rather have a... Yeah. Well, I look forward to it too, frankly. Yeah, how much we, time I'll have to prep sessions. We, we've always we've always joked <laughs> but, that we've always joked that when we all get old, we'll sit in that wall. We'll have to get ourselves in the same home so we could play D anD D all day long. You know what I mean? Like every day. But the, you know, the only problem exactly. is, is that one of us will get dementia. It'll be like, Pete, roll the die. What am I rolling <laughs> for? <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, we'll we'll do our best, and we'll yeah. have uh, assistive technology, and, uh, and maybe somebody gets written out of the story, or we roll the dice for them. However, we support each other. There's going to be a new generation coming after us who keeps it up, and they're going to be the ones who say, "Oh, remember that essentials kit, right? Remember yeah. Fandelver? Remember Lost Mines? That'd be their keep on the Borderlands." Yeah. Um, or or you know, um pick your favorite intro module i'm dating myself horribly with keep <laughs> but whatever yeah no <laughs> right there with you uh, yeah my favorite um, my favorite module that i ever ran on and, I, and it was the first because i started with a, a group in a library so it wasn't like my friends it was uh -huh. it was a it was a it was a public group and the first adventure that i actually ran on that was a pr published module was was uh barrier peaks and that has endeared wow. me to that module forever. Yeah. 
want that one to come back. I ran it. I think I TPK'd people oh, in it. Please, easy. <laughs> it wasn't that hard. No. Right? It's like, mm, they really wanted those lasers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> Until they blow their head <laughs> off with them. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, those are the, the adventures you, that get played and they get run by like hundreds of thousands of new groups are the ones that are kind of not the energy of that generation, right? It's like, yeah. so it's great that they're they're doing new material. I hope that uh, some of the Cobalt Press stuff kind of lives up to that. Um, I got a letter, a bit of fan mail from a high school teacher. I sent him a, a sort of a donation kit for his D &D club, and he wrote me back a year later and said, well, not only is the club thriving, not only do we have all these new people doing RPGs, but we all love your pseudo Egyptian setting and uh, other teachers are asking me if they can, you know, help with the club and they've got a, a lesson plan and they get credit for playing D and D in school, which wow. um, I'm like, well, they are getting math and reading and all that, but wait a minute. I, it's like a dream. Yeah. Pete, getting... We were born in the wrong time. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, They're getting I know, credit. Yes. yes. They get credit. Man, God, I would have, uh, I would have gotten a scholarship. <laughs> got straight A's and shit, man. <laughs> Validate motherfucking toy right here. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, man. man, I learned everything I know about ability from Roll and Dice, right? So nice. And I have, I have learned so much from role playing. I mean, like just stuff that's helped me in my profession, like because. You know, you don't learn how to use Word and Excel and all those those things as well as you do until you try to make a character, an automated character sheet with it. You know, like I learned yes. so many formula functions. You know, like like searches and matches and all this stuff, like macros and stuff. Oh, I wanted to calculate all the points in the character sheet, right? And then I get into work and I'm like, oh, I know how to fix this. <laughs> it's like, so that's yeah. yeah. Hey, those are transferable skills. Put them right on your resume. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's let's get into it. Let's let's talk about some of the stuff that Cobalt or Cobalt. I can't want to do this. Cobalt Press is doing. Um, uh huh. So you've got sure. what is your, your Kickstarter right now? Is is it the Ghost? Kickstarter right now is called Deep Magic. Deep Magic. Okay. It's already funded. Yeah. It funded in like an hour and a half. Right. Okay. It was quick. Um. And it's the big book of spells that you've probably always wanted. Like, if you wanted another handful of another six or seven hundred spells, this is that. Um, it spells for every single casting class. A bunch of them have been around. We started the Deep Mad series as PDFs only like four years ago. And and it's everything, right? And it's battle magic and chaos magic and clockwork and blood magic and wood magic. And, and then we pile in a whole bunch of generic spells. On it and arcane subclasses and backgrounds and then just to sort of something cobalt press always does and every time it's like yeah this will be fun and then we get the pilots and i say why do we do this uh, we're gonna let people submit spells to be published in a book if you're a backer of the deep magic kickstarter you can send us your best spell and about 30 of them at the moment are going to be taken into the book and cleaned up, right, and illustrated or added to the spell lists. Um, okay. But yeah, we're going to take 30 spells from fans, which nice. <laughs> every time we do it, we're surprised at how awesome some of it is and how much work it is to weed through the less awesome. But No, mm -hmm. hold on, wait a minute, but process. you have like a right of refusal, right? I mean, I imagine if somebody sends you a spell oh, yeah, that is just like crazy, you're just like, no, it's not going to work. No, we, we've already got like 1,600 backers right now. And if every one of them sends us a spell, right, like we're going to pick through a 1,000 and pick the top 30. Okay. Um, so we can be very choosy. Very choosy. Um, okay, so like if they back, they don't automatically get it. It just enters them into the ability. It gives them the ability to. Okay. Right. And, and most people, the thing that kills me is like most people won't even write one up. I'm like, it's like 200 words, maybe a hundred words right like if you have any homebrew sitting in your folder or the thing that everyone in your campaign loves it's like you'll be credited as a designer your work will be published it could be like the start of a, a string of things like this or right. it could just be hey i 
this thing once, right? Yeah. My um, name is in a book. It's worth taking the shot. Sure. Yeah. I mean, most people have to write a whole book to get their name in a book. <laughs> you don't even have to write a whole book, one spell. Um, and so that's that's a part of the project that I always love because there's new people. We did it with the monster books that Cobalt does us too. Um, but, you know, writing a balanced monster is actually probably harder than writing a decent spell. Yeah. Uh, it's a All lot right. more word count. So uh, you have uh, one huge fanboy in the chat room. Dave David Benavides uh, is is like oh, okay. just geeking out right now. He's loving it. I said, "Does anyone have any questions?" And I mean, he's just like, "Oh, so <laughs> let's take one or two. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I, I don't know if we want to talk about like uh, it's, this is a a touchy question, but he was like, "Well, talk about old school TSR." And um, I, oh, I can't shit. imagine how many times uh, people have to ask this question. Uh, Pete, I don't know if I should ask this or not, but he said, was Gary hard to work with or Jim Ward? So you can uh, – I am giving you the right of refusal on right. that. You can you like. or you oh, don't no, have to I'm answer. Totally... <laughs> I'll take that question. Well, okay. I, I got there after Gary was ousted, so I, I can't oh. even answer that part. Okay. Oh, right? Like I didn't start till 1991. Um okay. And by then, it was already Lorraine Williams running the company. But I did work with Jim Ward. Uh, he was the manager and the boss of uh, all of the creative teams, including the periodicals group that I was with for, for Dragon. Um, and he took care of people. Like, he kept the executives off in a separate section. He made sure that, you know, we had enough time to do the work. Uh, he'd certainly written a lot of D&D material. He still does these days. Yeah. Um, and Gamma World was his. So he got the creative side of it, right? Like, sure he was the boss of the creative department, but um, working for Jim Ward was nice. It was one of those places where you felt like your work was understood, protected. Um, and if you didn't make your deadline, we're still going to get, get out to the woodshed. But, um, <laughs> but you know, um, who, who you was your favorite? Your who was your favorite old schooler to work with? And you want me to pick my favorite? Well, not me, bro. Not me. I think they they were all phenomenal, right? Like that team. Good answer. Good answer. Uh, it's up there. Good answer. I mean, like I was working with the Planescape people. I was working with the people. The runoff people put on a play that they wrote in their spare time. It's really hard to pick. Um, and at the time I was working there, I could walk down to the artist studio where they were still all working in oil paint. Um, oh, I could wow. smell the turpentine, um, wow. and I, I, I could always see canvases. They all said that the canvas was facing them, back of the canvas toward the door, so that nobody would come in snooping and see the cover art, right? Ah, okay. Um, they, they all kind of kept it a little secret, but the artists all hung out in that one area, breathing fumes, and, uh, and I mean, it was Todd Lockwood, Fred Fields, um, and Clyde Caldwell, and Rob Ruvel, and, and all those guys, so... Um, yeah, talk Jeff about Easley. talk oh. about a dream job as as an artist. You know, yeah. you're, you're paid to just yeah paint. You come in and paint all day. Well, sort of a dream job. Then the executives would come in and say, "Make it more yellow, right?" But <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> mm. yeah, okay. Or or the designer would give some weird direction, like you know, I need six characters on the cover, but. I still get to work with some of them. Jeff Easley is doing the cover art for the very next uh, Warlock booklet coming from, from Cobalt Press. It's the zine we do in black and white. And nobody knows that Jeff Easley's inks are awesome. Um, I saw him at Harry Con this last year and said, could you knock out a little zine cover? And he was like, I don't know, yeah, probably. <laughs> the way that Jeff's always so modest. And it's like, all right, Mr. Easley, please here's what we need and uh it's gonna be out in like a month or two. my first commission jeff easley cover i'm super fanboyish and excited about it okay um yeah <laughs> no i mean like having known those guys and being able to to say hey um is has been just wonderful because they've got a totally different set of creative talents Still running at Todd Lockwood at barbecues and parties sometimes. And he always spends a good year. 
Okay. All right. So, so David, yeah. Mike, David got a question. Spence has got a couple. Why don't we go with the one that, that really pertains to uh, the Kickstarter that's out right now, the Deep Magic. Um, she asks, do, uh, do you write the spells? And if so, how do well, – I'm sure you write some of them. But how do you define or how do you all define what components are needed for the spell? Like what – do you just like pull stuff out of the air? Do you do, you do like some research? Like how do you – how do you um, Are we talking figure material out? components or sure. well, like I, she just she just said components, so I guess it would cover everything. Like, I mean, like when you get a spell, you like ah, this needs to have a verbal, and I think and a material or or like what? How do you how do you decide that? Oh, that's a good question. The unwritten spell time. Um, I don't know if it goes back to in jokes from AD and D earlier. Um, it's funny, Kim and I were arguing about uh, during some of the rewrites and re edits for Deep Magic um, because some of the components were really complicated or really hyper specific. And he was like, you know, they should be things that people can get, they don't need to be a particular saint's bones or something. Um, so I, in terms of material components, I mean, I like a jokey one now and again, but they're usually, <sighs> I know Jim Ward would kill me for this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, <laughs> if you go back and look at Western mysticism and like laws of contagion and laws of similarity and all the stuff that was part of the European beliefs, that's what so those material components are drawing on, right? Like if there's two cups connected by a wire to do a message spell, then it's, oh, you're playing telephone, right? Mm -hmm. So it's similarity. Um, if you make a statue of something for an enlarged spell, uh, it's not even the component, I'm forgetting. Um, you know, contagion is get a hair from the person you're trying to charm. So all of those things kind of go into what makes an interesting component. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it's kind of feel and sideways thinking and like it's the least mechanically rigorous and yet the most flavorful part of it is picking a really cool component that ties it all together like the cherry on top, right? It's, mm -hmm. like, Constituency and creativity. Yeah. Yeah, right? Like you want the mechanics to be rock solid, but at some point you want people to say, oh, what a cool component. This spell is more exciting for me. Um, so yeah, that's where some of the weird sideways creative work happens is, is how do the components come together? Right, like I have, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, I was going to say. It's a neat question. I like it. Yeah, that, that's a good question. It is a good question. Um, and so, all right. So we got a bunch of, we got still people asking a bunch of questions. Let's move on a little bit. Let's let's get a little more into the talk. Um, so so sure. for, for Deep Magic, one of the uh, things that I was wondering is, um, so D&D 5th Edition now has the ability to uh, scale your spells. So you can um, you can use extra sl or higher slots to, to make it, like I said, fireball f more powerful or whatever. Did you do anything with that? Like, did you did you modify or have you modified anything more like adding other things you can add to a spell? We have in a bunch of spells adding at higher levels um, just because it's part of 5e. That's fun. Um, I don't know that it's always damage. Sometimes it's number of targets or range or something else. Uh, yeah, we absolutely include it. Um, we do some stuff with rituals. We spend a lot of time on cantrips. Cantrips are a pain to design a good one. Um, and we made sure we had a good spread for all classes, right? Um, we didn't want to leave, I don't know, paladin's hand and give everything to wizard druids um so there's been a lot of work just combining all of the 20 installments today uh in one big set and make it either reference and clear the language um and and yeah making sure the edition language is as accurate as possible kim mohan's the leader on it he's working on a wizards of the coast project now i think in between his deep magic chunks, but um, he knows it backwards and forwards, and it's going to read just like a wizard's book. Cool. 
Very neat. Very yeah. neat. So, uh, how much longer we got on Deep Magic? Uh, is this a couple weeks, a couple days? We got a couple weeks, two, three weeks left, I think. It ends the day before Halloween. Um, so, if you want in, probably a good time to jump on board. Uh, don't wait till the last minute. Um, but yeah, and then once it funds or once it's over, uh, we immediately tell all the backers all right, here's where you send the spell the file name we want and we anonymize all of those and we send them out to the judges anonymously um and we spend november making sure we get you know top 30 top 40 spells uh and then by next spring it should be out now I, I think that is fantastic i mean you know when you playing playing a magic character you know the you know you watch the fighters and you watch you know the the your mm -hmm. your bricks and stuff go in and they get all the fun you know they get all do all the action and your wizard or your sorcerer or whatever has to like sit back and, and they do things here and there um and having more of a pool to draw from um especially if you like playing magic characters you know throughout the years let's say you've been playing for 20 years or 30 years and you've been playing magic characters <laughs> it's nice to have like oh, i got a whole new pool to play in I know some of the spells are funny and silly and make uh, people who've been playing that class just smile. One of them was Legion of Rabbit Squirrels for the Druid. Um, and some people just look at that and say, I don't even know what it is. I want it. Right. Um, and other stuff is like the blood section. We've had a lot of uh, DMs say to us, you know, I love getting something really evil, nasty and horrific. And I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> does blood magic kind of scratch that itch for you? And they're like, yeah, tell me more. I want a villain who does this. Um, <laughs> so, so we have a section at the back that's pretty much the, uh, you know, if you put it in a brown paper wrapper, we, it's like, well, players, heroes, you, you don't really want to look at this stuff. This is, this is not for you. Right. Um, and of course, every DM worth their salt is like, oh, please, Look at the dark tome. Please be tempted to use it. Right. Um, <laughs> but, you know, within that second, uh, for the heroes and more for the, I want a vampire to do something freakishly weird to, to just, you know, put the skin on people who been 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine vampires and blood magic go together like, like peas and carrots. Oh, they really do. So we have uh, we have a couple of sample characters, we have backgrounds. I mean, there's a lot of tools, but mostly the meat of it is spells um, that have been through the ringer, uh, that have been previously published and tested. We get feedback, um, and we're just really happy with where they're at. I'm really happy with where they're at. I've been reading through the. Um, it's good, and once the backer stuff comes in, it'll. Bad. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, What's your favorite uh, character class to play? Do you is your favorite a magic or a spellcasters or? You know, I love, I love arcane tricksters to pieces. I played one in Ravenloft. Um, I love the classic wizard. Um, and you know, now and again, I keep looking at the druids. Base and I've never played one, so I think that's that's coming up next. So yeah, I do like a lot. I used to play clerics way too much, but uh, yeah, it's nice to mix it up. Yeah, I've I've always been kind of a I like. I guess I gravitate towards the fighter classes more, but if I'm not if I'm not in the mood for a fighter, uh, I will I almost always go thief. I like thieves. Thieves are fun to play. They are. They're a blast. But, I mean, any character can be fun if you sure. take the right attitude. Right? Yeah. Uh, part of my joy in it is I've been playing with some of the same people for a long time, a few of them since the TSR days. Um, and then there's always new players who surprise me. It's really around the table more than what in particular they're playing. Um, but with people who've been playing a long time, I love all of the stuff they don't know. Right, right. All right, so um, so so you have Deep Magic, which is which is on Kickstarter now, and I would encourage everyone to go yep. check it out. But you also have um, 
You have some adventure stuff that you, you've done. You have uh, Empire of the Ghouls and Ghosts of Saltmarsh. Um, and I think you you really want to talk about Ghosts of Saltmarsh. Well, I want to talk about a little. I mean, it was... <laughs> I didn't write the majority of it. That was John Sawatsky and Steve Winner who did the re for most of it. I mm -hmm. did parts of it. Um, but it was great to have this chance to come back with the Cobalt Press team and visit um, the UK modules. And what I didn't know at the time is when I said, hey, Steve, you want to come work on Salt Marsh? Was that Steve had worked on the original Salt Marsh in 1980. Oh my God. Okay. Um, and he was an editor at the time. Yeah, I know. It's like it comes around, right? And he's like, well, it's been 30 years, but I think I remember. Um, and he he, uh, he was very amused to have a second crack at it, right? Um, only this time he was doing the writing duties. Um, uh, you know, the Cobalt Press team was brought in to redesign and bring it up to 5e and to convert it, but also to sort of like, Gave off some of the rougher edges and to maybe put in a few sparkly new bits and all the monsters without losing the flavor of what made it great in the first place. Right. Um, so the adventure chunk and the city part um, and the encounter tables are pretty much cobalt press material or I don't know what you call us, design studio. Sure. Because... Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I couldn't say yes fast enough when they asked. Oh wow, um, okay. So it, and, it... And, you know, we worked ourselves sick on it because it's just such a classic module, um, or I should say. And then they asked me, "Hey, Wolfgang, what other stuff from Dungeon Magazine did you like that's nautical or island themed?" I'm like, oh, well, throw me in that briar patch. I'd love to tell you, right? right. Um, and it was a long conversation between me and Jeremy and. Mike Merle's about what are the best things to sort of bring forward from third edition or second edition. Um, because Dungeon Magazine was a huge influence for a long time. I worked on it for years, but it's sort of unknown now, right? Like if you weren't of the generation that still read paper magazines, you have no idea what was in that stuff. Right. And some of it was awesome. I think that's so, where the, the anti paladin appeared so yeah, there, right? Anti Paladin appeared in Dragon a long time ago. That's yeah. where, it, like, the Ranger first appeared in Dragon, like, seven yeah. or something, right? And the Illusionist, and a bunch of things that we think of as, oh, part of the core game. Well, they came out of the magazines. Right. Hmm. Um, I guess those magazines were a lot more integral to the game. Uh, I couldn't have. Before I the can't, internet? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I, I can't imagine me, you know, growing up with D&D &D and. Um, like, cause I, I didn't grow up with D and D, but I can't imagine me um, being so into it, and probably not. I would have not been in, known anything about it, probably. But you know, I was a sheltered child. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't discover role playing until I met Pete. Yeah. I was a, a lad. I was a latter day lad. <laughs> yeah, he 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 cut his teeth on cyberpunk. That that's Mike's. Yeah, that's Mike's bailiwick. Oh, cool. Yeah, nice. So, well, there's a lot and, of exciting you know, stuff happening over there. Oh, oh yes. yes, very we're, exciting. We're very excited, actually. And we're buddies with with Pond Smith, so we're we're happy for him too. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I mean that game was amazing, and then it sort of disappeared for a decade or more, or it felt yeah. like it disappeared. So to have it come back is is great. Yeah, and coming um, back with a with a, a video game to help um, you know ride along with it is just awesome. Because that company, the video game company, is is really knocking it out of the park with all their promotion and and the game itself looks fantastic but the playthroughs and stuff that they've done i'm just i I, I can't wait to get my hands on it. i'm just like chomping at the bit like april can't get here soon enough so <laughs> well exactly we live in a golden age for this right like yes. video games are hot tabletop gaming is hot people are knocking themselves out doing their very best work i mean that's sort of the empire of the ghouls thing anyway that's an adventure from Dungeon Magazine. Like, we're bringing it. Uh, we're bringing it to Cobalt Press, right? We're doing a big Underdark campaign full of undead. It'll be out in March, April. Nice. So, yeah. Oh, nasty. Oh, the Underdark. 
Um, <laughs> so, so you have, um, so what about Empire of the Ghouls? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it started as Kingdom of the Ghouls was the first time I wrote this kind of material in the 90s. Uh, it was in Dungeon Magazine. It did well. It had a cover art by Brom. Oh, oh get out of here. It. Really? Yeah. Go look it up. Dungeon number 70. You'll see the art and you'll go, what the heck? A freaking nightmare. Um, and it's sort of an elegant ghoul, right? He's got like fancy clothes and I, I can't remember all the details. Now I got to go look it up. Um, but I was like, holy crap, I got a Brom cover up for my adventure. Um, talk about bucket list right there. Oh, and yep, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh huh. And so I'm like, okay, that went well. People seem to like that. And I forgot about it for 10 years. And then I wrote a version called Empire of the Ghouls for Cobalt Press, um, 2007, maybe. And that was for D&D 3.5, right? And I don't know. I was doing patronage before Kickstarter came around. So I'd like, I had 100 backers, right? It was a very small project. It's super collectible now. The people who actually got a print copy of that thing can name their price because, yeah, we made 100 of them. Mm. Um, <laughs> but whatever. And then recently I said, you know, I really want to go back to the Underdark. Out of the Abyss is all demons. I kind of want, like, undead and other horrors um and richard green said well i have an outline for just such a thing let me take the 3.5 stuff and update it to 5e and i was like well all right let's go for it and we kick-started it and people jumped all over it um it's got beautiful maps it's got like 50 new monster it's like a meaty level 1 to 13 or 1 to 14 campaign um so it's the first time that Cobalt Press is doing something as big as one of the um, Wizards um, adventures, right? That's, Usually we do little ones. This is a big one. That's for cool. us. Very cool. Yeah, it's horrific. If it doesn't leave you with nightmares, we, I'll be very disappointed, or you have a very stern constitution. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. We are role players. Yeah. You are role players. You've probably seen all this before. No, you haven't. You really uh, haven't. Uh -oh. All right. Uh -oh. Are we like call a Cthulhu level like scary by the time you're done? Yeah, with this? we're we're heading toward mythos level scary. Like oh. um there's some deep, dark, corrupt, horrible oh my goodness, what designer came up with this um stuff and I'm I found myself cackling several times reading turnovers from people. So nice. Well, That's always a good sign. So, so me and my friends, we don't really play much in the way of D and D. Um, but we, I mean, we're all, we all have a group that we game with every Friday. Uh, well, almost every Friday. And uh, right now we're playing seven C, but we've been, we've been running D and D, you know, we just kind of like convert on the fly. It's pretty easy to do with seven C, uh, with the new seven C, this, uh, this newest edition that, that they put out. Um, yeah, yeah. so that would probably be a fun one if I got that and then, uh, like didn't tell the guys I was going to, Hey, I got a series of adventures around you. It'll be fun. It'll be, it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Lighthearted, cheerful, sure. lots of little animal companions, <laughs> snacks, <Right. Yeah. laughs> freak them all out. It'd be awesome. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They will either never forgive you or say that was the best run ever. Yeah. yeah they'll probably like it. They'll probably like it. So I got to, I got to bring up something. I bought Cobalt Guide to World Building, the audio book and oh, listened yeah, to it. Yeah, it was yeah. fantastic. Great. It was awesome. You want I, more audio books? Is that what I'm sensing? I love audio yeah. books. Love them. He does. As, um, and I, um, so I'm ready. I, I have a fiction novel that I've been that I've been working on. I, I did NaNoWriMo last year, and knocked out the first fifty thousand words of it. Um, Great. I've added another uh, about fifteen thousand since then. But I, I got so many things going on, like this show and stuff. I have to I have to carve out another chunk to write again. But um, you know, NaNoWriMo is just around the corner. I know, I know. I can't do it this time. I got too much stuff going on. But uh, <laughs> but I'll get it finished soon. Uh, but the world, I really uh, enjoy these world building like ideas from other people because even though I know how to build worlds you know I'm, I'm I'm pretty good at it it never hurts to get other people's ideas and and there were some really good key things that that were in that book about like where to place things and how um you know how nations kind of form and stuff and and, and what you need to consider when you're doing that so that was that was very cool I found it very useful 
good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's, I mean, every time I sell one of those at a convention, I, I'm like, go forth, make something cool, and you know, I'll buy your book next year, or two years down the road, because I, I think everybody should enjoy a chunk of world building now and again. It's, I mean, people who don't homebrew, I don't understand these people, right? right. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you could run Ghost of Salt Marsh and have a good time, and well, no reason not to. Or run Empire of the Ghouls, have a great, dark, horrible, cannibal feasting time. But <laughs> then, why not run something that's yours, right? Like just to change it up. I, ah, uh, yeah. People who never homebrew, I don't get. Yeah, we're fortunate. Uh, the the one of the guys, well, two of the, the we have two guys who mainly do most of the game mastering, and uh, mm -hmm. they always the, they'll start with a setting, and but then they'll like almost always start with a setting, and then like heavily like really re-engineer the whole thing. So like right. if we played in like we played a uh, we did a campaign where we played in Star Trek, but we were playing Star Trek, but we. We were actually not playing part of the Federation. We were playing prisoners on a, on a planet, and we had to play from the other end of things, which was very interesting. Oh. And we went to whole right. different places. We didn't go to any – because we couldn't go anywhere that the Federation was, right? We had to go everywhere else. So that was really <laughs> cool, and there was there was some That's serious world building in that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I like people who put it through a blender or mirror universe it or just like oh. take it and make it your own, yeah. right? Like can take middle earth and say we're going to talk about i don't know <laughs> you're all half orcs right right that, that's part of the fun right pete like when we enter a new world a, like an entire new campaign and it's like well let's try and figure out where the hell we are this time yeah and it's right. always you know they're always trying to pull the wool no nah, nah, there's nothing nothing special about this place all right so you guys notice that everything <laughs> is blah and it's like the hell <laughs> right right we we'd be if like it'd be something like we'd play in middle earth right and right. it would turn out you know as we start to get into the campaign oh we're in the second age oh, you know yeah, just yeah, stuff yeah. like that you know so that's always yeah. fun oh it's good fun i mean we have these fantastic settings we have all this supporting material we have good adventures for them um you know might as well cherry pick and, and run with those um, but each of those was just somebody's, I, I mean, Middle Earth was just Professor Tolkien's homebrew at one yeah. time, Yeah. right? Like the Forgotten Realms were just Mr. Greenwood noodling around for a while. Yeah. Um, so they all come from somewhere. It's, yeah. it's, they took good notes. Well, that's, I mean, yeah, I, I totally understand that. My novel is set in my own world with my own nations. I even, I, you know, I did my map. I did everything everybody does. I did the map. I've got, you know, I've got countries and races and I did all, it's, I mean, it's completely its own thing. There are no orcs or and elves or anything. done it right, if you've done it right, like someone can pick it up and kind of get into it slowly or dive into the deep end and figure it out and, and we'll say, wow, this isn't like anybody else's stuff. And that's... That's pretty great. Yeah, I'm I'm privileged to have uh, been privy to most of the Bible stuff in his world, and it's 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 it. I feel like it's it's that good, it's pretty unique, but it's familiar but unique. Yeah, that's what you want. If it yeah. gets too weird, nobody can figure it out. That's right? see, that's my point. My point was is like I I don't want to do the same old thing, but I can't stray too far and make it like super weird, like like completely alien to anything anyone's ever. Because how are they gonna wrap their head around it? You know, it's like yeah. you need some hooks. They don't have to be like you know obvious hooks, but there needs to be something that they can go. Oh, this is kind of like that. And you're like, yeah, it, it is a little different. You'll find out. But if you want to imagine that for right now, that's okay. Yeah. No. Give them give them somewhere to start. Right. All right. So we're coming up on time uh, for for the okay. game. Uh, but before we do that, you have a Patreon, or you have to. Oh, I do. Yes, yeah. it's the whole Cobalt Press crew contributes, but I'm busy currently writing for the next next zine. Uh, it's called Warlock. It's on Patreon for a buck. You get uh, six, seven, thirty-two page booklets a year. Um, and for a few more bucks, you get it in print. And for a few more bucks, you get all these adventures. We've done 40 adventures on that Patreon so far. Um, they're all fifth edition. There's new monsters. There's different designers. There's great art in it. Um, and yeah, I'm 
really pleased with how the Warlock stuff has come along. Um, I mean, we had Jeff Easley do the cover on Booklet 10. Uh, no, we didn't have Jeff Easley. We had Larry Elmore. Larry, oh. On 15. oh, my God. Yeah, we had Larry Elmore on number 10 and Jeff Easley on number 15. So, Jeez, that is amazing. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, we're not skimping, right? You're no. getting your money's worth for uh, for a buck or three. You, uh, you get a lot. And that... it's basically, yeah, it's our way to do the stuff that would never, like, make it into a mass market store. It's short and sweet or weird and quirky. That um, is uh, Wolfgang. That is, dude. That is amazing. I mean, you would you say seven thirty-five page books? Yeah. Well, yeah, something like that. We do seven a year. Um, thirty-two page. It's got to be divisible by two. Okay, Probably thirty-two. Yeah, okay, so thirty-two page, right? Yeah, and they're on different topics, right? Like we're gonna do one. We did one on on war and battle. We did one on clockwork magic. We did one on just magic period. We did one on the Cthulhu mythos. We did one. I mean. Yeah, you know, we did one on elves, and so they're all kind of themed, uh, and you never know what you're going to get. But for the price, it's hard to. That's amazing! No, no, it's like twelve bucks. Twelve bucks, and you're getting seven books that you would pay twelve bucks a piece for in some cases. Yep. God damn, that's awesome. And then we do how many? Well, we used to do two adventures a month, but people said they're too short. Make them bigger. So now we do one adventure a month but double the size mm-hmm. um so instead of being like a seven page adventure they're more like a 13 or 14 page adventure um which is enough for a full night's play and probably a full weekend's play if you stretch it a little nice um yeah and those have been a lot of fun too because they're <laughs> they go from level one let's go explore the barnyard where the basilisk egg just hatched to um you know, level 15, the giants are coming down from the passes. It's all over, guys, right. kind of stuff. Um, the, the apocalyptic Ragnarok cult of the giants is a pretty big beating that fits right in, you know, Storm King's Thunder or wherever you want to put it. It's just a baby basculus. Don't look at any eyes. I don't care. <laughs> don't look at it. But they're so cute. <laughs> so charming, tiny little adventures. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right all right all right uh everybody go to make sure you check out because we didn't touch on half not even a tenth of the stuff that cobalt press puts out uh you can go to cobalt no. it's easy I'll, I'll spell it in case people don't have to spell cobalt k-o-b-o-l-d press.com uh and on twitter at cobalt press and at monkey king what's monkey king monkey king is my private twitter that, yeah. account okay which you it's know, a has twitter a lot- thing Pete, just don't yeah. worry about it. Okay. No, I, I mean, just... there's gaming stuff on it, but I, I do a whole bunch of science and art and other weird stuff on there. So don't, yeah. I mean, follow me. Sure. I'd be happy to tweet at we you. Do. But... We oh, do. The Mythwits follow you. Okay. Hey. All, right. All right. Fair enough. No, no. I was just, I was just wondering what it was, Mike. I wasn't, wasn't criticizing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you could go to Facebook.com. Very defensive here. <laughs> no, no. Pete, Pete is anti Twitter. I'm not a, I'm uh, not a fan. Yeah, of Twitter. I, I just was trying to explain it. <laughs> okay. All right. Go to Facebook.com forward slash Cobalt Press. And of course, yep. Patreon.com forward slash Cobalt Press. And I'm, I'm telling you for a buck. Twitch.com forward slash Cobalt Press, right? Like we're on Twitch, we're on everything. Twitch. Yeah. Just look up Cobalt Press. You'll find all the things. All and the and I, I'm pinning this to our chat and uh, we always edit our uh, description. So the links will be in there and in our podcast feeds as well. So fantastic. All right. Yep. So, hey, let's play a game. So here yes. we go. It's game time with the Mythwits. I'll be your game master this week. And this week we're playing Bet the Geek. I have taken questions directly from my upcoming game, Cube of Death. Each round I will ask Wolfgang a D&D trivia question. Before he answers, Mike and I will guess whether Wolfgang will get the answer correct or get it wrong. You don't have to get it right. We just have to determine whether you're going to get it right. We must also hedge that bet by one, two, or three points based on how confident we are in Wolfgang's D&D foo. Once all the betting is in, Wolfgang will reveal his answer. Uh, Mike and I will each start with ten points. And so... When I ask a question, don't answer. Let me and Mike bet, and then you answer. But mm-hmm. we're going to give you three warm-up questions so that we can oh, gauge your, your, your D&D food. So you can, you can answer these right away. All, All right. right. Ready? Sure. Okay. 
so according to the 5e srd so fifth edition at what mm. rate does a ring of regeneration heal your character man i should have a ring of regeneration hmm. uh man i don't know a point around uh, that would be 1d6 yeah, every 10 minutes. I think a point around was like second edition. It was, it's like every yeah, edition up until now, right? See, I, I'm a second edition baby. All my answers yep. are given assuming that it's second edition. Oh, that's going. Oh, Pete, okay. you're going to have to do the conversion then. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here's a good one. This is an old, because it's reaching way back. Which two, and this is interesting, this is the word mythoi. Instead of mythos, it's mythoi when it's uh, plural. Mm -hmm. Were removed from the original deities and demigods. Oh, I believe we had to remove possibly two mythoi, wasn't yes, it? It was the, two. Yeah, the Cthulhu mythos because they didn't have the license and maybe the Elric stuff too. That is absolutely correct. Cthulhu and Melibonian. Or Mel yeah, Nibo, yeah. Nibonean, as some people pronounce it. That's how it's pronounced yeah. in the audiobook. I don't know. <laughs> All right. In 5e, what ability modif modifier, what, what ability modifiers do tieflings start with? Oh, hell. I should know this. <laughs> Planescape kid. I don't even remember the i can't even fathom the question you just asked <laughs> tieflings is oh, a race. which bonus, which ability score bonuses do they get they yeah. should have two and yeah. who, who are they tieflings what? they're the, the little demonic children of the outer planes mike, mike doesn't know just keep going he doesn't like, know. Ign right, ignore mike. like a little uh, are there those little uh, no ignore mike <laughs> let wolfgang answer I, i'm just gonna mike. say i'm gonna guess it's uh charisma and constitution it is intelligence and charisma. Yeah. So intelligence yeah. plus one, charisma plus two. All right, let's get to the let's get to the real game here. All right, here we go. Question number one: According to three point five edition, the Holy Avenger gives what bonus to attack in the hands of a non paladin? And Mike, I will go first. I will go first to help you out there, buddy. Um, Which this is three point five. Three point five edition. Three point five, not two. Like okay. Wolfgang said, he's an expert in. Right. Three point right. five. Now it could be the same in two. It could be the same Good. in every edition. I just picked three point five for this question. So I'm going to say that Wolfgang knows it for two points. Hmm. Hmm. I'm I'm face reading, and I'm getting nothing. Uh, <laughs> I'm pokering it up here. I, I don't know if I want to have fo, uh, what is that called? F uh, FOMO or or FOMOP, fear of missing out on points? Or, <laughs> uh, gee, I, you know what? I'm going to say he knows it for one. Okay, so Mike's is one for yes. All right. And Wolfgang? Now if I get it wrong, you both lose points. Is that yes, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes. <laughs> But I lose less points just just for the record. Okay. <laughs> so I can metagame this thing is what you're saying. Sure. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that the three point five number is a plus three. That is close. It's 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 plus two. Ah. All right, so it's minus right. two for me, minus one for Mike. All right. So we, All right. we started with ten, correct? Yeah, we started with ten. So I'm at eight and Mike is at nine. All Mike, right. Mike, you're in the lead. Mike is in the lead. I am. According to 5E, what is the highest bard level spell? Mike, you go first. So the highest uh, level a bard spell can be, you know, because like in the original AD&D, you know, uh, magic users could have ninth level. And I believe mm. uh, um, druids, what were they, like eighth? Maybe they were ninth level as well. But the, rangers the, could it's have seventh. Yeah, so, so, anyway, uh, well, you're close. So Mike, go ahead. You're close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, yeah. Mike. No, so what do you think? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> according oh to God, I'm trying to come up with the answer. You're still not sure about the question. <laughs> according to 5E, what is the highest bard level spell? The highest bard level spell. Yeah, I'm going to say Our two points he doesn't know. Spell. Okay, two points. That's no. like that's like uh, two minus that's two minus five. That's like minus three 
um, episodes away from his his uh, wheelhouse there. So, uh. Uh, you know what though, he just did a book on magic for five e. So I'm gonna I, I'm gonna, I'm going uh, all in. Wolfgang, I'm with you. Three yes, with me on this. three right. that you know. All right, so a three that I know. Yeah. Oh man, Peter, I I don't know if that's going to be rewarded or not. Hey, but we'll get out. We'll out. see. <laughs> yeah, get right. out. Let's, see. <laughs> Let's get out and see. I'll say fifth. Fifth. Oh, Mike, God yeah. damn you! It is yeah. ninth level. Right. I was yeah. really. It's ninth. Yeah, dude, it's ninth. Uh, ninth. Shut up, Mike. Ninth of Bards. Yep, Bards. Who gave Bards ninth level spells. What idiot planned this? I oh, I, I don't weird. know. I don't know. Okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. What All did right. I say? Two, I don't know. What did I say? Two points? He said no two points that he wouldn't. So. Away with this thing, Peter. He is. He is. It happens. It does happen. All right. Uh, all right. Next question. What is the hit die of the barbarian? And I think this is true in every version they've been in. Um, and and I, is it my turn to go first, Mike? It's my turn, right? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay. I'm going to... Hmm. Wow. See, I was going to zig the other way this time, but wow, this will be the one he gets right. Uh, I, you know, I'm sticking with you, Wolfgang. Two that you know it. Two that I know it. Yeah. All right. I've never Mike? played a barbarian. All right. Mike? Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, <laughs> my 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 psychometric uh, powers are telling me, my, my powers of psychohistory uh, are telling me that uh, you know it for two. Okay, so All two, right. yes. All right. Wolfgang? Oh, my favorite dice in D&D are D12s. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Mine, too. They are the best. They are the best dice. And Especially you were, for two points. That was three points for you, Pete? No, two for each of us. Two for each of us. Okay. Oh, it doesn't budge the meter at no, all? No, uh, not a bit, not a bit. You know, I had I really... Should have, I should have gone with D4s just to mess with you. Yeah, you could have. Uh... You could have. You can. All right. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to reach back into the way back again. What is the name of the magical sword that drains souls from S2 White Plume Mountain? Three points. The... He knows it. Okay, Mike. Three points. Yes. You know what? And I can't. I can't. Three points. Yes. I, I can't mm. not do this. You got to know this. You both one. have a whole lot of faith in me. That's an old module by Lauren Schick that I ran in the <laughs> library like 16 times. Why yeah. do you I know that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Black Razor? Is oh, that yeah. what we're talking about? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Who doesn't know Black Razor? That's why I was yeah, just okay. like, I ran that thing to pieces. I love that adventure. Lauren right. Schick was, yeah, right on target. That Thanks was, for the gimme. That was such a good module. All right. It was. Here's the last one. Mm hmm. What? Now we talked about this. What? And Mike, you get to go first. Damn it. Right? Or do I go first? No, I, I first. just I went okay. first. You you go first. Yep. All right. What are the material components for a fireball? Mike, or let's oh, see. I go boy. first. See, yeah. Why did you ask this now? I don't know. Hey, how does soup <laughs> taste? Like, three... I know the material com- I really don't, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I want to say I mean, three. I, I could probably guess. You should hear me trying to guess at like uh D and D stuff. Oh, it's great. There's 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 a there's a good story we always tell about the chromatic dragons. <sighs> okay. Mike. How mm. many points? Yeah, what are, you, what are you doing here? Oh, uh right. Uh God three, he knows it. All right. All right. Oh, really? All okay. right. I do love wizards. I did let that slip. You did write a Not whole. Not there's anything wrong with you guys that. Did write a whole no. book on spells. And... <laughs> uh, Fireball isn't in the Deep Magic collection. I'll just right. have you know that, right? Like we're not right. reprinting the SRD. No, there's no point. But you had to research, and so you you went over the other ones. You just you say you ran that other module. I'm sure there was a <laughs> Fireball or two in there. Yeah, probably. <laughs> All right. So uh, what... how many points, Peter? I I went three. Yes, Mike went three. Yes. Oh, jeez. I really yeah. should mess with you both, but I'm pretty sure there's bat guano involved. That is correct. And there's one other one. And uh, is there another one? Is it yeah. a pinch of sulfur? That is. I can't remember. Absolutely correct. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. I get it. All right. So, so, so the, we... there was a video of me for Deep Magic in a prior edition where I worked with a bunch of pyrotechnic people. And I said, can you make me look like Tim the Enchanter throwing fireballs? That was all I wanted in that video. And they made it happen. They were a bunch of uh, fireworks people who usually do the 4th of July and the Seahawks touchdown fireworks. 
And I, mm -hmm. I said, let me cast Fireball on this video. And 12 squibs later, there it was. They nice, said, how comfortable right. are you with losing your eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Wolfgang. Hey, Mike, by the way, you get this. He doesn't oh, get this. Yes. He doesn't get this a whole lot, so I'm, I'm giving it to him. I'm giving it to him. He's getting the big flex. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bravo. Enough of that. Enough of that. Good it's job, just like Mike. to show off my shirt while I have a chance here. Yeah. What does it say? Never trust an Adam. They make up everything. Make All up right. Everything. Yes, hey. they do. Yes, they do. Hey, this Mike. Score, I, I got 19 no to 13. Is that what it is? It's it's 19 to 13. Mike got 19. I got okay, 13. Good. Yep. Trounced me, brother. Trounced me. Thank you. Well done. All right. Well, Wolfgang, thank you. And again, everybody, make sure you check out koboldpress.com, Cobalt Press on Twitter, Cobalt Press on Facebook, Cobalt Press on Patreon, and everywhere. The Instagram, the Grams, and the, the you on Snapchat? Is there any Snapchat in there? No Snapchat. Okay, no, no Snapchat. All right. Okay. Not on this the Snapchat. Not on the not on the snaps. You got a uh, what is it? You got a TikTok? You're doing a no. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I've heard of that one. No, oh, that's too yeah. short. Yeah, yeah. It's something my daughter does. Yeah, we're wordy, Jess. Right, we are. We sure are wordy. All right, everybody. Let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna run the closer. Thanks, Wolfgang. Thanks, guys. Yep. Talk to you later. Yep. Uh, it's game. Oh, it's not game time. Where am I? At? Where am I? At? I'm at the wrong thing, Mike. I'm on the wrong page. You've just enjoyed another episode of the Myth Witch. Yeah, go down on the dock. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. And I would just do this from memory, but we changed it recently, and I can't remember what the changes are. So do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Myth Witch's love over the entire planet. This was a good episode. This is a good one. You can share this one. Tweet us at MythWits and check out MythWits.com. MythWits is produced by TSR Games and is part of the TSR Games Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool stuff. MythWits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't sell it, and don't mix it with a little ball of guano and a pinch of sulfur because you might set your face on fire. Uh, thanks everyone for, uh, for tuning in and until next week, Mike, never get into a land war in Asia. Okay. All right.